Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to answer a very common viewer question I get about dive watches, which I've reviewed a number of on the channel, and which I've got three of sitting right here. And that is, Nick, do I need a helium escape valve? What is it even? Well, uh, that, luckily that's a very easy question to answer, because the answer to do I need a helium escape valve is no. You, you do not. Statistically speaking, you have absolutely no need of a helium escape valve. But let me explain why. First off, what is it? What, what is the idea here? Well, both all three of these watches actually feature a helium escape valve. On the two Omegas, it's uh, right up here, this second crown-looking thing over in the corner. And then on this Markin Sons, it's uh, this little port on the side of the thing. You'll also see it positioned there on the Rolex Sea Dweller, Deep Sea Dweller, etc. Um, but the idea behind the helium escape valve is that sometimes if you are doing saturation diving, and what I mean by that is not just like deep diving, but this is a very specific kind of diving where you are kept at a, a high pressure for a number of days as you conduct a great deal of underwater work. That way you don't have to do decompression. They will often have you be uh, breathing in an, in an environment where there is more helium than normal in the air. And as a result, um, it, it is possible because helium are very small molecules, or uh, well, atoms, I suppose, that the, 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 the helium will get inside the, the, the movement of your watch. And then when you go to decompress at the very end of your saturation dive, it's possible that the, the, the crystal, because there is pressure built up inside the watch from that helium, will come fly it out and your watch will be exposed to water or air or whatever it is. And so a helium escape valve is quite literally just that. It's a little valve on the side of the watch here that allows that helium to escape. So if you are in a saturation dive situation, you, you're finally depressurizing, what you'll do is you'll just unscrew this crown here and that'll allow the, heli the helium that built up to, uh, to, to, to escape during the course of your, uh, uh, your ascent, so to speak. And that's all that it is. On some of them, it, you don't even have to unscrew it. It's just an automatic system. Although, frankly, for most of them, e even if it was just a freaking circle drawn on the metal, it would be just about as functional. And the reason I say that is that um, uh, helium escape valves are just not effective for anybody who does not do serious saturation diving. And in fact, if you didn't start off this video knowing just what a helium escape valve was and why you need one for your specific career as a highly skilled, deep, technical diver, then... Uh, yeah, guaranteed. You just don't have any freaking need. Unfortunately, though, I, I'm going to go one step further, is not only do you need one, but you may not want one either. And, and the reason I say that is twofold. Um, you know, this kind, where it's just built into the side of the watch, is pretty innocuous. I mean, at, at the absolute worst, it adds a little bit of complexity, but they've built it in such a way that uh, the watch retains its water resistance, in this case, 500 meters, which, by the way, is way deeper than humans go. So, um at least without, like, a submarine wrapped around them or something. Um, but nonetheless, um, that is a... Uh that's already excessive, but it doesn't really harm anything to have it on there. That's okay, but on the Omega approach, where there is actually an external valve, like on this guy or like on this guy as well, where you can rotate this valve, the problem is, this watch right here is 300 meter water resistant, and this guy is, uh, what ridiculousness is it? Uh, this guy is 600 meters worth of water resist. That's completely freaking nuts. But uh, anyways, when you have this valve uh, pulled out like this, when it's fully extracted, that actually opens another port into the case and makes the, water, the watch much less water resistant than it was previously. This 500 or uh, 600 meter water resist watch, yeah, I know, um, it suddenly becomes 100 meters when you've got this untwisted. And I believe it's similar for this little guy there. Which means that if you accidentally untwist this guy, you no longer have the dive rating that you thought that your watch had. And that's, that's just not a beautiful thing. The other thing, more practically speaking is that if you put this guy in your wrist, you now have, instead of a smooth surface in the back here, you now have something that will snag on things, that will grab on things, and that those things will actually open this valve probably three or four times now in the course of a year or so owning this particular watch, I've come down and I felt the helium escape valve was a little bit ajar. Usually it's not a big deal, and let's face it, I'm not going 100 meters most days anyways, frankly ever. I don't even dive. That's the silly thing. But nonetheless, so you end up with something that is basically a vulnerability and is winning you absolutely nothing. So ultimately, helium escape valves are marketing devices. That's kind of the, 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 the what you should take away from this video, is that A, you don't need one, and B, anybody who's trying to give you one is just selling you an idea. It's they're selling you a thought. If you are doing serious saturation diving, you're going to have better equipment than one of these watches there. I mean, maybe you'd like it, but still. And for everybody else, all that they're doing is they're giving you additional complexity. And so the fact that they love diving about it, you know, or, uh, diving, I'm sorry, they love bragging about it. Bragging about the dive watch heritage, that is just pure and simple advertising. So you don't need a helium escape valve. I don't need a helium escape valve, but you know what? Omega, Rolex, whatever. 
whatever, got to give them to us anyways because they think it's a nice marketing trick. Ugly, but I guess that's life. Hope this has been interesting that uh, all of your ignorance was able to escape through the convenient valve. Well, maybe not all of it. I've still got plenty left, so I assume you do too. But mostly, I hope that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that you enjoyed this dive into a pretty obscure area of horology. Bye now.